I'm Ben Hanawal, product specialist here at Atlas Copco, and today we're going to be talking about the Power Focus 6000. Let's take a look down in the software. Today I want to talk about the Settings tab on the Power Focus 6000, which is located from the home screen at the bottom right corner. So if I click into the Settings tab, we're going to find a lot of different menus over on the left hand side of this. Now keep in mind I'm connected to the controller through the web interface right now. Now, going down the list, we're going to see a couple of different sections here. We're going to see network, server connections, preferences, so on and so forth. We're going to go through each of these individually to make sure that we fully understand what's within each of these tabs. So starting from the top, the network tab. This is where you're going to set all of the IP addresses on the PowerFocus 6000. So here you see it gives us the service ethernet port. This cannot be changed, so it's always gonna be here. It's just for reference. And then this also shows our factory ethernet port, and it shows what the IP address assigned is. Now, on the network that I'm connected to, I'm actually being issued out an IP address. So if I click into the edit button, you can see that my controller is set to DHCP. Now DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol. Mainly this means that my controller can receive an IP address from the network. Now if I was to change this over to manual, I could put in my own IP address into the settings. Now because I'm already connected to the network, I don't want to lose connection to my controller, I'm not going to make this change. And you can also see for reference, when I do change it to manual, we also have some optional settings. We can set a domain name server, also domain names for going on to certain customer networks. This is a very useful tab to have as well. So let's back out and let's go to the next tab down. So on the next tab down, we have our Tools Talk connection. This is all of our server connections. So connecting the controller to an external server. So this would be for Tools Talk 2, and you can see I'm actually connected to my PC with Tools Talk 2 for connecting to Tools Net. So if you wanted to turn on Tools Net, you would turn this on and plug in your IP address as well as the Atlas Copco License Manager. This would be if you are using Tools Talk 2 to distribute licenses. You would need to turn this on and then typically that server host would be the same as your Tools Talk 2 server host as well. So the next tab down we're going to have is going to be the Preferences tab. So if I click into here, we have our date and time settings. So we have a couple options in here. We can set it to manual, we can also set it to ToolsNet, so that means it's going to pull the time from ToolsNet or NTP, which is the Network Time Protocol. Next one down, we can change the language, pretty self-explanatory. Torque units, so this is actually where we would go to change the torque units in the controller itself. Temperature units, if you wanted to change those, there's only two options. You can also change the startup screen, so when the controller boots up, do you want it to boot to the home screen or do you want it boot to the results screen? Now, right now I'm connected to the controller through the web HMI. What you'll notice is, is there's actually an accessibility tab here. So I actually have the ability to turn off access via the factory port. So if I turn this off, I would actually lose connection on what I'm showing right now. Next tab down is an important one. This is our pin. So this is where we password protect the controller. So if I go to configure, you'll notice we can turn on or off the pin and then set our inactivity timeout as well as add additional users. So if I added a new user, I could put in anybody, you know, engineer, and then give them a specific pin. And what this is useful for is this gives us the ability to track who's logged into the controller and it gives us the ability to have some traceability on who's making changes if you do password protect your controller. Now the next tab down we have is tool. There's not a lot in here. It's mainly service indicators. So if you wanted service indicator alarms, calibration alarms, or oil level supervision, which is for the new TBP tools. The next tab down we have is going to be our wireless settings. Now this is where we would turn on or off Bluetooth or wireless LAN ad hoc. Remember on the PowerFocus 6000, you can connect wireless tools in an ad hoc way which would be pairing it directly to the controller, or you can connect them through the network, which would be an infrastructured connection. If you are using an infrastructured connection, you do not need to have the wireless LAN ad hoc turned to on. Now next tab down, as the uh, newer softwares are starting to introduce some new tools, this is where we have the configuration for the BCV and the BCPRE tools. 
So this is where you would actually go in, name them, and put in your IP address and server port of the actual tool itself. Next tab down, we have our events. So this is really for if we wanted to modify our events. So for example, if we did not want to log the event when the controller is started, we could actually come in here and turn that off. If we wanted to put out a special message, so if the tool got connected and we wanted to put a special message that says tool connected to virtual station, I could actually put in a custom message there so that it'll actually output that message when that error occurs. We also have the ability to turn off acknowledgement. So if there is an event that you want to turn off acknowledgement on, you can do that in this tab. Now, the next tab down, this is actually a really useful portion. On the previous generation of controllers, we never had the ability to modify the field bus information from the actual controller screen without third-party software, the Tools Talk 2 or Tools Talk software in the past. Now we actually have this small tab which shows our field bus type, and it allows us to change the IP address, which is very, very useful when it comes to troubleshooting field bus connections. You don't need to connect to Tools Talk 2, you can do the basics right here. Tools Talk 2 would be required if you needed to create a bitmap. That's where the Tools Talk 2 software would be needed. And last but not least, we have the factory reset button. Now, this is pretty basic. If you click the reset button, it'll ask you if you want to delete everything and you can hit yes. The factory reset button is very useful if you're trying to start a controller from scratch, if you are troubleshooting, or if you're you know, possibly selling something out of demo stock and you wanted to get rid of all of your you know, test programs off of it. This is where the uh, factory reset button would be useful. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to contact your Atlas Copco marketing team and we can try and get you some answers. <music>